This week, I had a chat with my old mate Benga, ahead of the release of his album, Chapter 2. Right, Benga, thanks for uh, inviting us into your house. I feel good. I'm a little bit uh, disappointed that there's no tea, no cup of tea, but... What more do you want? I won't hold it against you, it's all right. What are you up <laughs> for me? I've given you my abode, I've given you some water. Oh, that'll do, that'll do. I'm quite happy, I'm, I'm comfortable, that's, that's all that matters, mate. Uh, thanks very much for turning out. I've seen you've uh, put on a nice outfit on for us for today's uh, proceedings. Always looking sharp, man. mate. I do try and keep it blinging. Okay. You definitely do. I've actually like, I've got some pictures with me. I wanted to go through some of your old, some of the looks over the <laughs> year, over the years, because you've, you're like a follower of fashion. You've always been like into clothes and you, you like looking good. 100%. So if we, like, if, if, can, we, can we go as far as to say that I've always been, I've always loved fashion, but I'm not a follower of fashion. Though. Yeah. The first look I've got for you is Call of Duty, modern hair care. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's peak, bro. <laughs> that is so peak. That's like 2004. I think that was that filthy dub, like early 2004 in Brixton. I'm going to pick out everything that I see in this you picture, can, right? You can keep that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to put it up, but I'll tell you what I see in this picture. What? I see an orange t-shirt underneath my cream jacket, yeah. which is just a combo I wouldn't do right now. <laughs> and dry lips. Oh. Ben, you ain't rolling with dry lips, yo. Can I just also <laughs> make... Scream's got, Scream's got a Von Dutch trucker hat on in oh, that picture as well. It's Pete, man. That's a lot We've come a long on. way. We definitely have. The second look, I like to call this one Ralph Lauren YOLO Sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is both of them, yeah? Yeah, there's two different looks. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell have you picked that out from? Oh, bruv, I've done a lot of digging around online through people's Facebook pages that we know. This I found is some belters, mate. Real. I think that's got to be about two, six, 2006, seven. Right, this has got to be earlier than that, but not that much earlier than that. Because that one's um, the dubstep wars, right? Yeah. So that's got to be like 06, yeah. around that time. Yeah, yeah. And You're I think right. that's about the same sort of time that I've won from forward. What do you reckon? Can I ask you a question? Go on. Do you think I look better now, or do you reckon I look better then with that afro? I, I like the new hairstyle, I must say. I really think the afro is a lot of work as well. Yeah. Do you remember that you used to have to wear the glove to put uh, with the hair dryer on? Because it used to get hot. <laughs> what did, what did Entart used to call that? The rump mitten. The rump mitten. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much joke, man. <laughs> it brings back memories. Brings back memories. Definitely does. Sick. Right, moving on to the next look. I like to call this one yeah. beads, bass, and banter. <laughs> <laughs> You're heavy. Yeah, man. Do you remember when you used to always wear beads? You always had like different coloured beads that used to match your trainers. See there. That was when the swag started to get turned up a notch, I yeah. think. Yeah. That was the beginning of it. I used to wear Bathe and Apes then, innit? Yeah. Bathe and Ape with matching beads and my Benga t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I've been through a lot, haven't I? You I've definitely my, I've have. I've got my body through a lot. You definitely have. Right. Look at Scream looking at me there as well. Imagine what he's saying to me. He's probably saying to you, can I, can I borrow some beads? <laughs> Because that was screaming the Kid Robot era. Do you remember his yeah, like, yeah, Kid Robot? Yeah, he loved that, didn't he? Yeah. What's that, 09, 2009? I don't know about that. Around that sort of time, what maybe. Are we, 2000, yeah, you're right. About nine, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Right, and the last look, and this mm. is like where we're at now. And this one's confusing to me. <laughs> so I didn't really know what to call it, but I'm going to go with Nintendo Fox Hunting. Aztecs in Paris. I can't, I can't imagine what. There's a lot happening there. You've got like the Highlander hat going on. This is sick. The, I mean, in terms the, of that scarf, look at us. We're wearing Nigerian the, clothes, man. This is where the Paris comes from. Because I swear you've got like, you've got, oh no, it's Gucci. You've got Gucci on there. I thought it was a Louis scarf. You've got two Jesus pieces on. You've got like some 8-bit Aztec <laughs> jumper what looks like a dead animal around your neck. And yeah, you're doing a lot in that photo. There's, There's a lot going, going on. But if you ask me, right, I'm looking healthy, man. Yeah, that's looking Compared good. Compared to like some of these photos, I don't look so healthy, but this, I look healthy in. Yeah. It's like I'm going backwards in age. Yeah. 
I don't know. Even that. your crew, like everyone's just got it on lo lockdown in that photo. Just bathing it up. Yeah. So in uh, the pictures we saw, you were screaming one then. Uh, yeah. You obviously do the Radio One show with him every Friday. Um, a lot of people obviously um, know you and Scream as like big pioneers of the dubstep sound. Yeah. But now you're playing a lot more varied in your radio show. Yeah, and Ollie's obviously like, he's moving on to like a more house, disco, techno kind of oriented set. Mm -hmm. But what, what's in, what happens in a Benga set now? When you're DJing out, what sort of stuff do you like to play when it's just you? Can I be honest with you? I think one of the key things for me, right, and not to go too deep into it, but I just think I definitely don't want to spend another 10 years in one genre. Mm. So I'm not going to move over to the house completely. I think one of the key things for me is to be an artist and do what I've always wanted to do and just be like, let's just say like a Dre or like a Timbaland and just create Benga beats that are anything, but you know, get all types of artists on it and be making like, massive tunes, I'm not saying chart records, but making massive tunes for artists, other artists, and making these albums that feature other artists on, and just being like, just following my, the, ambition, the ambitions that I've always had, do you know what I mean, mm. like going through with it. Yeah. So with that in mind, do you think at the moment it's quite difficult for you to find like dubstep that excites you at the moment in your sets? I mean, it is pretty hard. I mean, I, coming from a dubstep background and still wanting to play dubstep, I think one of the key things for me is, like I say, having to play all my own music because I don't find enough creative dubstep. I might mm. find a lot of energetic and dubstep that makes me want to like go mental, <laughs> but nothing that, you know, because we're trying to play music to people for hours, sometimes two hours, we want to keep it moving around. I don't really find enough stuff to move around with. Do you know what I mean? I think you get this, people make either energetic stuff or they turn around and say, I'm going to make something a bit deeper. Like really deep. Yeah, I just yeah. think, why can't you just make something that's creative? What's the middle ground of creative music? I don't know, that's, if I can't find it, I just make it, like I always did. Like, you remember when Hatcher was playing tunes that we couldn't get, what do we do? We just made our own tunes to fit our yeah. exclusives. That's what I'm gonna do this year. You're literally gonna like make music that you wanna play. Yeah, That fits it. in amongst everything else that you enjoy. Yeah, this is it. That's the key. So, uh, you and Scream have got an Asia tour coming up together. Um, with the two different sort of directions that you're both going at the minute, is it difficult for the two of you to play back to back at the moment? I mean, it's definitely, I would definitely, I'm not going to say it's easy, but with me and Scream, we always just work off a vibe anyway. And with me playing everything and him playing Majority House, it's just like whatever he would go to play, I would always just follow off him. And yeah. if I was going to play something completely different, I would tell him. And if he doesn't have anything, he would play something that I would tell him to play or whatever. You know, it's just like, it's really easy for us. I mean, I remember when we would do, let's just say like a year ago when we did back to back, that wasn't easy in terms of like, you know, at one point he, in his normal sets, he might want to take it to house. So then he's thinking there, he wants to take it to house. I think one of the key things between it is that we're good friends. So we communicate anyway. So mm. he's like, he's not going to just drop it down to 120 or 130 without telling me, which then gives me time to prepare what tunes I want to play around that, so. You just finished an album which comes out in what must be just, just under two weeks now. Yeah. Um, how was it working on that album? Were you excited for the release of it? 100%, you know like, the maddest thing is I, this was set, this album, Chapter 2, which comes out May 6th, um, was set to come out in August. And I've been working on the album for about, I would like, I say a year, but longer than that, because I had made so many beats while I was making Magnetic Man album. And I think everything that's gonna come from me after this album, you would class as experimental, but I think, cause it's just trying to be creative and trying to be forward thinking, but still as, you know, dance dancey as possible. Yeah. There's a track on the album called I Will Never Change, yeah. which I think is quite fitting, because <laughs> as fresh and current as the album sounds, yeah. I can always hear a Benga track like a mile off yeah, and absolutely. I think it's to the drums but what do you think is like your key ingredient like your trademark as a producer? Yeah it's definitely I'm gonna go as far as to say it's definitely in the drums. Um, I think one of the most key things is that I do this thing well I at least think I do this thing which is I swing out my drums and keep them moving and rolling but then what goes on top of those drums is always very different to whatever the last thing that went on top of those drums were. Um, and I always think, another reason you can tell a Benga song is it's just like, there isn't many things like it. Like if you listen to Warzone, which is like, 
that it's between that and I will never change is all my favourite records on that album. But um, it's funny you say that actually because I was going to ask you what your favourite track was, and I was going to say that they were my two standout tracks as well. They two, it. I couldn't choose between the two of them. Leave it. The same, same two. It's it's, it's mad, isn't it? It definitely like listening to it. I can imagine like almost like a weight was off your shoulders when you finished it because there's so yeah. much going on in that song. Yeah. You managed to make it all work together somehow, and like. I could kind of like, it must have been like scoring a goal in a football match. <laughs> like, <laughs> Running off and celebrating yeah. like probably doing the whole act. As soon as the mix down's Flip. finished and you're bouncing it and it's like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I've got to send a big shout out to Sam Frank, because he's a, oh. Without him, my album wouldn't sound like how it does. Do you know what I mean? Just because of the fact that he's a huge inspiration to me, but then making records like Warzone just don't come about about mm. geniuses like him. You started out like in, in your mum and dad's. Like you, I remember coming around your house and you had like yeah. one speaker that used to like blow your eardrums oh. when you turned it on because your snares <laughs> were so loud. <laughs> it was deep, wasn't it? Could you Demo. ever? Could you ever imagine like being this? Did you? Could you ever foresee this? I know the drive yeah. and the passion was always there, but did you always think in the back of your head, yeah, one day I'm going to be sat in like some fat house just like talking about an album that's coming out? Definitely not. Doing a Radio One show. As All much that. as I try to gas people and say, yeah, when I was young, I thought I was going to be living in this house and driving the cars that I drive, and just like, no, I didn't. I definitely didn't believe... I, I, maybe I had, you know, I had dreams and stuff, but I didn't think I'd be living like this, and I didn't think that I'd be able to, like, put out an album on Columbia like I can, and just like... Nah, because this is a dream, mm. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, nah, of course I didn't think that. I mean, obviously you want to have all these kind of things, but coming from where I come from when I was a youth, like kind of not having a lot, do you know what I mean? I mean, just down to the fact that I, my mum had to go through some crazy struggles when, she, when, I, when I was young to kind of like, kind of bring me up and mm. kind of keep me, as, keep me off the streets and just to even just provide for us that like food and clothes. And I just think to myself, that has been a massive drive towards me, like mental. Cause it's uh, not just you though, all of your brothers as well. Like all of you are like- Succeeding. Succeeding. And We've like- We've been through the same thing. Yeah, it's mad. And I don't think it's a coincidence cause I think we all saw these things on TV. Like I would see, who knows, going back as far as, even Dre, like I'd see these guys with and JD, and I see him with chains, mm. I see him with rings, I see him with watches. Do you think it's a coincidence that I sat there and just like wanted these things so badly, just to, just to get out of the situations that we was in as a youth, like just to even just to provide for my mum, like the way these these stars do. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like get them out of there, get their mums out of work, and their mums are living the high life. Even things like that. It's just like I see that, and I'm just like. That breeds, for me, desire. Mm. Because you don't get this far in this world without desire, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you can be kind of passionate about stuff, but you need a desire, you need a hunger. And that's what that breeded for me, man. It's like, I needed chips, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I needed chips. Bro. Chips, definitely. You know saying, yeah. Right, I think uh, to wrap this up, mm. I think, one of the things that I'll have to do like at the end of this interview is I've got to record the intro of the interview, like to yeah. introduce what we're doing here, who we're interviewing, like as we do with every episode of the show so far. Same. So I think that what we need to do is you need to style me for it. Like, <laughs> I need to be like, I need some Benga swag for the intro I'm of up this for video. This. Are you down for that? Yeah, yeah, I'm down for this. All right, let's do it. Benny, thank you very much. Salute to you, bro. Big up. It's been fun. Big up, man. It's been emotional. <laughs> and, uh, looking forward to chapter two. Looking yeah, forward man. to that dropping and good luck with all the touring that is going to follow that. Thank you, man. Cheers. Choked on it then. I'll <laughs> uh, do it again, do it again.